Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I'm Dr. Renu Tyagi from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today I'll be talking on the module Ramapithecus, its phylogenetic and taxonomic status from the paper Human Origin and Evolution. The learning objectives of this module are to describe the physical features of the Ramapithecus, to understand the phylogenetic position of the Ramapithecus, to describe the fossil evidences recovered in the context of Ramapithecus, to learn about the fact that leads to the evolutionary advancement of the hominid line, and to understand the taxonomic status of the Ramapithecus. Now let's get familiar with the topic. The geological time scale starts with the formation of the earth some 4.6 billion years ago. The first and the longest span of the time was the pre-Cambrian where the forms of the life were small, simple and soft bodied. The onset of the Cambrian about 570 million years ago marked the rise of shelled animals in the sheep. Then followed the ages of the fish, amphibians and reptiles culminating in the domination of the land by the dinosaurs from about 200 to 65 million years ago. Mammals first appeared more than 200 million years ago, but were overshadowed by the reptiles. However, some 65 million years ago, all the dinosaurs as well as the other group of the reptiles on land, in the sea and in the air and certain other animal groups and many plants too became extinct over a relatively short period. This was only one of the several mass extinctions that have occurred through geological time. The extinction marked the beginning of the tertiary period and the age of the mammals. The tertiary is divided into the epochs and development in the primate group can be traced from the fossil they left in the rocks formed during the time. The first hominids that is the member of our family hominidae crop up in the fossil records less than few million years ago. Mammalian evolution covers only about 4% of the Earth's entire history and humans have been around for only 0.1% of the history of our planet. The quest for our ultimate origin began with the origin of the life itself. The Earth is about 4.6 billion years old. Fossil evidence shows that small, simple organisms were living at least 3 billion years ago. A great deal of evidences supports the notion that all present-day organisms are related to each other. And these forms as diverse as the slime mold and elephants, oak trees and beetles, roses and humans ultimately arose from a single common ancestor. Some 3.5 billion years ago, this means that a single evolutionary tree or phylogeny relates all organisms living and extinct. Biologists and paleontologists assume that the evolution from the simplest beginning through a successive of the stages as represented in the fossil record towards the present day diversity of some 10 to 30 million species. This does not mean that today's diversity is in some way the destiny or the end point of the evolution. There has been great diversity in the past and there may be in the future. This figure shows the different stages of the hominid evolution. Now let's understand the Ramapathicus. The last and the most important hominid from the Miocene period is the Ramapathicus. It is accepted by many scholars to be the first true hominid. Ramapithecus dates back to the period between 14 to 10 million years ago. It was discovered and questioned as Rama's ape by the Edward Lewis in the year 1934. The specimen was later analyzed by Simmons in the year 1964. Simons gave the name Ramapithecus Punjabicus to this find which was a long time thought to be the highest evolved form in the hominid evolution belonging to the ape group of the Dryopithecus. The fossils of the Ramapithecus primarily teeth and jaws 
come from two areas, the Sewalik Hills in the India and the Fort Ternan in the Kenya. Other specimens have been discovered from the Turkey, Hungary and Greece. The Ramapithecus fossils roughly date back to period between 14 and 9 million years ago. The ecological setting of Fort Ternan and the Sewalik Hill fossils is that of a forest woodland environment. The Greek fossil being younger are that of a drier savanna like environment. The hominid feature of the Ramapithecus includes reduced and vertically implanted incisors and canines, little or no diastema, flattened and thick enameled premolars and molars that appear to be adapted for the heavy chewing and processing of the heavy food. Moreover, the placement of the chewing muscles indicated an increased chewing pressure brought to bear on the food being eaten. These features sufficiently different from the earlier Miocene fossils indicate Ramapithecus direction to the hominid line, perhaps the first hominid. Ramapithecus specimen very strongly suggest the exploitation of a new dietary source most likely seeds, nuts and grasses. That indicates a shift from the softer forest fruits and vegetables relied upon by the apes. This dietary shift is rather clearly associated with the climate change in the later part of the Miocene that led to an increase in the open grasslands and the decrease in the forest habitat of the apes. There is a greater probability that this hominid form apparently was moving into a new ecological niche. It was beginning to exploit a more open ground environment similar to that inhabited by later hominids. Ramapithecus is also the most likely candidate for the ancestry of the later hominid because of its presence in an area where the next hominids that is the Australopithecus have been found. The possible adaptation that Ramapithecus made is open, ground, living include an increased degree of the hand and finger preparation of the food. Perhaps more frequent use of the tool in such preparation. Tendency towards upright positions and bipedal locomotion for the movement with a wide field of the vision through the tall grasses on the open plains, possibly longer periods of the growth and development and perhaps even a more frequent inclusion of the meat in the diet. None of these adaptation can be clearly demonstrated because of lack of the fossil evidences but what we know is that these adaptation were clearly present by the time the next phase of hominid evolution the Australopithecus had begun. Ramapithecus had begun to evolve and acquire those hominid features that led to the evolution of Australopithecus. Now let's see the significant anatomical characteristics of Ramapithecus. Their facial profile is orthogonathus that the profile is like the face nearly vertical with the straight jaws. The front of the head or skull is perpendicular due to the short jaws. Ramapithecus has nearly vertical placement of the incisors and canines opposite to the apes which has teeth in the slight procumbent position. Number three, generally apes have projected canines with large spaces in between whereas Ramapithecus canines are not projected and they possess very narrow spaces or no spaces. The another point is it has canine fossa or depression encountered in the fossil Ramapithecus caniapithecus. The gap between two teeth is usually referred to as diastema and it is evident in apes whereas in Ramapithecus there is little or no diastema was found. The size of the front teeth that is incisor and that of the canine to that of the cheek teeth that is premolar and molar is nearly the same which is an indication of the human characteristics. The premolar and the molars due to the change in the food habits and because of the adaptation from the soft food to the heavy chewing 
and grinding of the hard food stuff let become flattening with thick enamel the molar possess the y5 cusp pattern as in dryopithecus the size of the third molar in ramapithecus is reduced as compared to the first and the second molar the tooth rows are slightly divergent and have been identified as parabolic or slightly v shaped by some scholars the maxilla among ramapithecus is reduced in size which indicates a placement of the chewing muscles which actually increase the chewing pressure required to bear or chew the food being eaten inside their lower jaw a shelf like ridge was present there is a presence of the large inferior torus on the mandible or the lower jaw ramapithecus possess round dental arch like humans the palate of the ramapithecus is arched now let's understand the discovery and distribution of the ramapithecus G E Lewis in 1932 made the discovery of Ramapithecus for the very first time ever in the Shivalik Hills region of the India. He uncovered an upper jaw and assigned this fossil to a new genus and species as Ramapithecus breviorus. The generic name with initial as the Rama represents being the mythical epic literature and the species name given by Lewis is a latin word used for the short snout after that in 1961 another fossil of ramapithecus was unearthed from southwestern kenya near fort ternan by lsp leake leake called it is a kenya pithecus vicari the fossil include the part of both sides of an upper jaw the species name is based on the name of the owner of the farm from where the fossil was recovered now let's see the ramapithecus fossil discovery sites with their discoveries these are being given in this table which describes the discovery and distribution of the ramapithecus during world war 2 the fossils of next ramapithecus were excavated in greece by a german geologist von freiberg he also assigned the specimen into a new genus and species as the grecopithecus freibergi he unearthed lower jaw with complete set of teeth at the time of discovery another fossil of the ramapithecus was invented and discovered in 1973 in turkey near kandir same 40 mile north east of the ankara this fossil belongs to the miocene deposit the fossil includes the lower jaw it was named as sivapithecus alpani the species name of the jaw honors the director of the turkish geological survey a major group of the ramapithecus fossils has also been unearthed from the rudamya mountains of the north eastern hungary in the coal deposits of the miocene age they are also assigned to still another genus and species that is rudapithecus hungaricus the genus and the species name is because of the place of their discovery now let's have a look at the paleontological evidences from india with special reference to the shivalik hills as india was assuming its present geographical and biotic features there evolved various species of the ape whose fossil are found in the shivalik hills bordering the himalayas dating from 15 to 7.5 million year ago these are the earliest member of our taxonomic super family the hominoidea to appear in the south asia their evolutionary relationship to other extinct and contemporary ape species recovered in the europe africa and east africa give them a significant place in the biological history of primates in general and the ancestry of the humans in particular scientists who studied the shivalik ape fossils assigned some of their species to fanciful taxonomic names taken from the hindu mythology thus 
Ramapitikas, Sivapitikas, Brahmapitikas and Sugrivapitikas came to be known collectively as the God Apes of the Sivali. During the course of the past century and a half, this fossil record of the Miocene hominoids has been variously interpreted, a major question being the evolutionary affinity of the God Ape to the earliest member of our taxonomic family that is the hominidae. Now let's see the phylogenetic position of the Ramapithecus. The possible hominid status or the phylogenetic position of the Ramapithecus has been the center of a great deal of debate. A great abundance of the hominoid fossil material of Ramapithecus has been found to be in Miocene epoch which is certainly called the epoch of hominoids. The first radiation of the hominoids has its root in the beginning of the explosive adaptive radiation of the Ramapithecus. The remarkable evolutionary success represented by this adaptive radiation is shown in the geographical range already established for hominoids during this period. The Miocene hominoids fossils have been discovered in France, Austria, Spain, Czechoslovakia, Greece, Hungary, China, India, Pakistan, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Uganda and Kenya. Now we need to understand the status of the other fossils to conclude the phylogeny of the Ramapithecus such as the Dryopithecus. During Miocene and Pliocene epochs, the Dryopithecus made their appearance in the Europe, Asia and Africa. They resemble the size of the gibbon in the body form and with the gorilla for the body structure. The fossil or the remains of the Dryopithecus unearthed were mostly teeth and the jaw. Thus scientists are restricted to the dentition pattern as characters to the distinguishing Dryopithecus from the hominidae. After observing the dentition pattern or the dental characteristics, Gregory and Helleman came to an conclusion that Dryopithecus were the common ancestor of the anthropoid ape and the men. Lartet in the year 1856 discovered a lower jaw bone and assigned to the genus Dryopithecus from Miocene deposits in South France. The phylogenetic position of Dryopithecus in the evolutionary tree has been found on the basis of peculiar pattern of the dentition which is unique to the Dryopithecus characterized by the five cusp lower molars. It has been concluded by many scientists after a careful examination of the fossil remains of different species of Dryopithecus like Dryopithecus fontani, Dryopithecus Rhuanus and Dryopithecus darwini that if probably be the ancestors of the gorilla, chimpanzee and hominoid form respectively. The fossil remains discovered in Europe and Asia since 1970 suggest that Dryopithecus gave rise to at least three genera between 10 and 15 million years ago. These three genera are Shivapithecus, Gigantopithecus and Ramapithecus. The first two genera primates have faced as large as modern chimpanzee and gorilla. However, Ramapithecus had a small face which clearly reveals its resemblance or similarity to the later hominids. Pillbeam in an attempt to draw attention towards the morphological features shared by the group which differentiate it from others and to clearly focus on the adaptation and biology rather than phylogeny has proposed that a number of the middle and the late Miocene species of fossil remain can be classified together in Ramapithecus. Within the Ramapithecid genera, the two most widely distributed are the Ramapithecus and Sivapithecus. The teeth of the Ramapithecus and Sivapithecus is difficult to distinguish when in isolated form except on the basis of the size. The front teeth, especially the upper central incisors of the Sivapithecus are often quite large while the canine is fairly good sized. 
the most distinctive aspect of the sevapathicus dentition is seen in the back tooth row where the molars are large, flat bearing and thick enameled. Facial remains of them have concave profile and projecting incisors. However, the Ramapithecus teeth are similar and show less canine dimorphism than Sivapithecus through larger than the Pliocene hominid Australopithecus afferensis. It is considered that the fossil finds of the Ramapithecus implant a new array of character which provides insight for the human evolution and it is the most important fossil which provides this immense evolutionary knowledge. This is possible because of the efforts of G. E. Lewis who unearthed the fossilized remains of the Ramapithecus from the Shivalik hills of the India and Simon who attempted and attributed a very significant phylogenetic position of Ramapithecus in the line of human evolution. Scientists by keen observation of the Ramapithecus highlighted key points which are highly effective in the search of human ancestral pattern. Some describe Ramapithecus as a weapon wielding terrestrial biped by examining the nature and extent of its teeth. The scientists who are the proponents of the Ramapithecus as a human ancestors are Simon, Tatrazel and Pilbeam, Convoy and Pilreem and conducted a review based study and made a plausible interpretation about Ramapithecus as the late Cenozoic ancestor of Australopithecus. However, the material so far excavated discovered in the context of Ramapithecus suggest that it belonged to the line between Dryopithecus group belonging to early Miocene and later modern hominids. Thus, on the basis of the fossil findings and interpretation about Ramapithecus, it has been widely regarded as the first hominid and ancestor of the Australopithecus. It is suggested that if divergent from the ape, line around 14 million years ago and marked the evolutionary beginning of the hominid line of evolution. The main characteristics which is responsible for giving Ramapithecus the status of a true hominid is its dental similarity with that of the later hominids. Swartz and Jordan while discussing the status of the Ramapithecus made a remarkable comment that when a creature is defined as hominid, it doesn't mean that it is a modern man, but the term is just depict human like form. Now let's see the different controversies regarding the taxonomy of the Ramapithecus. The taxonomic status of Ramapithecus depends on the fossil fragments of the teeth and jaw unearthed and discovered after the first reported discovery by G. Edward Lewis in 1934. Lewis identified his initial discovery as a new form and he named it as the Ramapithecus. Then a number of discoveries are carried out and unearthed a number of fossil remains which are recognized also as new form and the fossil remains are given separate genus and species name based upon the geographical sites from where they are discovered such as the Kenyapithecus, Gracicopithecus, Rudapithecus, Sivapithecus. Then Simon and Pilbeam in year 1965 attempted to review the entire group of fossil discoveries and suggested that all the varied forms of the fossil remains actually belong to two species only. They indicated Sivapithecus as one species from which was basically ape-like structure and thus it can be considered as an ape ancestor. And the other was the Ramapithecus which possessed a number of hominid characters and thus regarded as an early hominid ancestor. However, a series of more recent studies cast doubt about it but the views was extent in 1977. Lipson and Pilbeam and Andrews and Cronin in 1982 suggested that the two form that is Sivapithecus and Ramapithecus are actually one single species group with the male and females of sexually dimorphic species group. This idea is put forward probably because 
to make these data conform to the concept of molecular clock. The molecular clock assess the time duration from the common ancestry of two species using the concept that molecular evolution occurs or takes place in a linear fashion suggesting that humans and apes had a common ancestor. Once upon a time about 5 million year ago or even closer to the present time, if this concept of molecular evolution was considered true, then it would be logically impossible that there existed prior ancestors of the humans, Rama Pithecus, dated about 8 to 14 million years ago. Thus, the new views and suggestions on the fossil remains have been focused on the ape-like feature of the Rama Pithecine and the most powerful is the sexual dimorphism which was found in every great ape known but not present markedly in any species of the genus Homo so far discovered and identified. But then the discoveries from Yunnan strongly suggest that two species evolved there. One of the major evidence of the form Yunnan is a large creature with larger dental features, sexual dimorphic, large canine dimorphism, large canine heights and area with more herbivorous dentition. This has been identified as Sivapithecus ape-like feature. Comparatively, the other creature is smaller, possess smaller dental features, sexually dimorphic, smaller canine dimorphism, large canine heights and areas with more omnivorous dentition. Therefore, it is attributed that we would not deny that it is an adaptive radiation of the pre-human form. Now, let us summarize about what we have learned so far in this module. The last and the most important hominid form from the Miocene is the Ramapithecus. It dates back to the period between 14 to 10 million years ago. It was discovered and crushed in as the Rama's ape by Edward Lewis in the year 1934. The specimen was later analyzed by the Simons in the year 1964. Anatomical characteristics of Ramapithecus include orthognathous facial profile, vertical pacement of the incisor and canines, unprojected canines with very narrow spaces, no diastema. Due to the changed food habits, the premolar and the molars become flattening with thick enamel. Molars possess a Y5 cusp pattern. Reduced size of the third molar as compared to the first and the second molar. Presence of the large inferior torus on mandible, round dental arcade and arched palate etc. Among these the hominid feature of the Ramapithecus include reduced and vertically implanted incisors and canines, little or no diastema, flattened and thick enamel, premolars and molars that appears to be adapted for the heavy chewing and processing of the heavy food stuff. The Ramapithecus specimens very strongly suggest the exploitation of a new dietary source, most likely the seeds, nuts and the grasses that indicate a shift from the softer forest fruit and vegetables relied upon by the apes. Ramapithecus is also the most likely candidate for the ancestry of the later hominoids because of its presence in an area where the next hominid that is the Australopithecus have been found. Thank you.